What's going on everyone? Nick from 618 Fishing here and welcome back to another fishing adventure. So I'll be heading to the marshes today and see if I can catch me a monster that makes me think I'm snagged. Um, choice of baits today would be either a pork chop, a chicken wing, or a filet mignon that I have soaked in Kool-Aid. I think I can do it. Alright, so I'm geared up, y'all. Um, I hope you like that 618 fishing impersonation. No hate. All of 618. If you fans of 618, so am I. I'm subscribed to his channel. Just thought it'd be funny. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Neil Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips. We'll be back for another vlog, y'all. Check it, man. Um, I'm out solo, man. I'm out solo doing my thing out here in the marsh today. I got no plans, you know what I'm saying? It's like three miles an hour of wind, super low wind, super low tide. The last time we had a real super low tide, me and Mark did like that 1v1, um, one chip challenge, top water only. Make sure you check that out. I'll try to put it in the description below. And when it was really low tide, we had a fire trout bite, red bite. So I'm just gonna go um, hit up the marsh. I can't get too deep into it because I'm not about to be pushing this boat. Um, if things go to plan, I might drop this on Christmas. Yeah, I might drop this on Christmas. So if it's Christmas today, the day that you're watching this, Merry Christmas! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Merry Christmas, man. I thought I'd do a Christmas episode. You know, I, I didn't drop it on Christmas. Disregard everything I just said. If it's Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Thanksgiving. Whenever I drop this, it's happy, okay? 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 So, man, yeah, like I say, no goals today. You know why I take that back? I want my first 20 plus inch flounder. That's right! First 20 plus inch flounder. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I think I can do it. Yeah, y'all. I'm gonna get a little fancy with this vlog, but enjoy it. Lego! I burned out like a wandering ember. I shone bright in my journey was old. What I sought when I ran was back where I began. No matter the rain, no matter the storm, I'm coming on. Hi, y'all. As I'm heading to the spot, thought I'd drop some knowledge, some tips. You know what I'm saying? So I've been a kayak owner for about mm, four months now. Four months now. I bought it back on, I think, August 27, 2021. My first thoughts or recap on my four month of being a kayak owner, probably one of the best investments I've ever made in my life. In my life, you know what I'm saying? The first time I experienced any kind of kayak fishing, shout out my boy MDR Fishing. Um, he took me out to this exact same marsh and I just remember just being at peace. You know what I'm saying? Because when you bank fish, peace ain't the word for it. <laughs> When you got like 80 people around you. So I, I've probably been on my kayak now anywhere from 
15 times maybe and it's like the first time every time I go you know what I'm saying you're just out here you know if you look around I'm amongst hundreds and acres of water hundreds and I am literally the only kayak fisherman out here right now so it gives you that peace and tranquility of just being one with nature you know what I'm saying I think it's like six foot oh shit okay ah! go fishing they said ah! it'd be fun they said should stay home and watch Netflix <laughs> um, another thing as far as like a benefit of kayak fishing the fishing is way better you know what I'm saying when you have an area that's really hot pressure with so many people you know it scares fish away so when you're one kayak fisherman amongst thousands of acres of marshland when you throw in paint out there it's not that much competition and these fish in the marshes are a different breed they're they're hungrier they're bigger they're faster they're stronger so the fishing is absolutely top notch over bank fishing um some tips when buying a kayak save save to get what you really want you know a lot of people will buy kayaks something really cheap as long as it float you're good initially but then you have all these things that's an inconvenience to you that you don't like so try to save to get what you really want so at the long run you'll be happy and satisfied and have a better experience save because <laughs> buying a kayak is like buying a house you know what i'm saying when you buy a house then you realize you gotta buy 13,000 accessories for that house it's the same thing with a kayak you know what i'm saying and plus i'm a youtuber so there's a whole other electronics that i don't even want to get into it <laughs> but save man but get the, the get the minimum don't think you got to trick out your kayak at the very beginning let's get what you think you barely need which is a fishing pole a pfd and a net that's it then once you start going out you're trying to learn hey i need this hey i need that I got a fish finder too, man. I don't use the fish finder to look at fish. I like to know how deep it is, because if I flip this boat, I'm gonna know if I'm gonna die, okay? Plus, it has waypoints, so I can have a little GPS tracking. The marshes back there, you can get lost simple, because everything look like grass and water. There ain't no, there ain't no stop signs back there, y'all. Ain't no street signs back there. So you want to actually get like a GPS system. Um, I have the garments tracking for, it's like $120. Gets the job done. And I think really it's just, it's not even about like the fishing. Like if I literally came out here and just, just floated around and just paddled around, I would still get the benefit and the love of it. So with that being said, if you're thinking about getting a kayak, 100% do it. Save, get it. It will be the best investment you ever made. You will not regret it. All right, let's get to our spot. All right. Made it to the entrance. I think we can drop a rudder back down. Oh no. Gotta get back to the channel where it's deepest at. Now, if this water is coming out super shallow. I think there might be fish like right here. Theoretically, that makes sense, right? Because if the tide is going super low, and um, all right, so it's tide going super low, the big fish has to come out this way. They're probably posted up right here. It's one way to find out. All right. If you're new to my channel, I use a ultralight seven foot old 18 rod, a Vanford 500 Shimano reel power knob. I use my infamous five pound braid. I got 10 pound floral leader. I'm gonna start off with a flat bugs, old penny. I got some other lures. I know y'all be like, Neo, use something else besides bugs lure, bro. I got some other stuff just in case y'all, just to kind of entertain y'all. But for now, let me 
Let me fish this little channel and see what we can do. See if there's any fish like chilling right here in this channel. First cast. Protect yourself against the sun. These mosquitoes being real disrespectful. I'm not gonna lie, man. Um, if I don't catch any fish, I can resort to eating oyster. It's like literally all you can eat. Y'all see that? Can you eat marsh oyster or is it like different type of oyster? I'm just curious. Just curious. Man, it does look kind of furry. I gotta catch a fish. I gotta catch a fish. Come on. Alright, so fishing is super slow because the tide is super low. So I'm gonna do something I've never done before on this kayak. We're gonna get a drone shot. I've been avoiding this for months now because of fear of crashing my drone. I have to land it essentially on this kayak. But I gotta get the shot for y'all. I'm scared. All right, come on. We're gonna get this drone shot. Let's go. Oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining. It's the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope The weary world rejoices for yonder brave New and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voice says Oh, night Alright, so um, another great thing that you'll definitely need if you have a kayak is some kind of trolley system anchor system stakeout pole because the currents back here are constantly moving when i first had my kayak i did not have a stakeout pole so i was just drifting and drifting and constantly having to adjust to the water conditions it was crazy so with the stakeout pole at least gives you an opportunity to to be in one spot all right, so I got a solution. Y'all better not screenshot this. Y'all see how ashy my hands are right now? Y'all see that? I don't got no lotion. I'm not ashy, all right? It's the mud and this marsh water. But I got a solution though. <laughs> you, you, y'all yeah, not about to be clowning me about my hands. No, no sir. I'm not gonna be up in the comments talking about Renew. Why you look like you've been mixing your hands up with baby powder? Nope. <sighs> so another benefit of a kayak is that kayaks will get you places that boats can't. Now granted, having a boat does make it a lot easier to get to places but some places boats just can't get this shallow. I'm in like less than one foot of water. Probably like nine inches. So with the benefit of having a kayak, you can get to those spots. If you can find a fish, boy, you, you can find them and it's gonna be heavy. And you don't have to worry about all that boat traffic. So another benefit of having a kayak. Another kayak. 
I know it's a crazy concept, but mosquitoes like water, marshy water. So you need to make sure you have two things at all time. Number one, mosquito repellent. Number two, if you're bad and bougie like me, get you a bug jacket. I even got the pants. Oh man, it's like December. Why are these mosquitoes still here though? Anyway, another tip. All right, next tip when it comes to kayak fishing, hydrate. A lot of water. It's December, man, and it's still warm. I think when I first got this kayak, I brought two of these. Go through them easily. I got these at Academy. Um, these are, I think, half a gallon. Yeah, half a gallon. It's only like six, six or seven dollars for this. So yeah, important tip, hydrate brings lots of water because you never know what might happen out here. All right, kayaker tip for beginner number eight, nine, a flag. I have a flag, man. The flag has like a light on it because if it's before like sun up or sundown, you want to have a light. Plus with the flag, man, these boaters, they'll be flying like 50, 60 miles an hour or so. We're on flat level water. So you want to do everything you can to be visible because the reality of it all is that if a boater is not paying attention and we're not trying to get their attention, you know what I'm saying? We can die because ain't nothing we can do. We're stuck, like literally sitting ducks. Also, with that being said, about getting attention, have a safety whistle. <whistles> Remember the chick from um, Titanic? The whistle saved her life. All right. So that's my other kayaker tip. Let go. That's a big boat. All right. Now remember I said keep your head on a swivel. We got the perfect storm about to happen. We have a huge barge behind me as you can see. I have another boater already creating a wick as well. Man, I'm stuck. So we need to make sure kayak number tip number 10 is when you're dealing with wakes, you want to make sure you turn into the wake. You don't want to have your boat sideways while the wake is coming. So we're going to go right towards the wake. Here we go. Got it. There we go. One more. There we go. There we go. Plus you have the big bars as well. And this is why it's super important to keep your head on a swivel. Pay attention to your surroundings. And what's funny is that smaller boats like that can create more dangerous wakes for you in comparison to big barges. The barges stay plain, meaning they're flat, they're not pushing that much water towards us. But we're good, we're dry, partially dry, and we survive. So remember, very important, turn your bow towards the wake. Crazy out here, y'all. Should all the acquaintance be forgot and never brought?